Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Chapter 2 of his categories, Aristotle makes a set of distinctions and then provides some examples that I have found myself as a student quite confusing when I first started studying Aristotle. And I have, I've seen many, many students saying, what is going on here? I don't understand what he's talking about within a subject, predicated of a subject, all these different sorts of, of possibilities. So it, it's actually not that complicated. And I think that it just requires us to follow out what, what Aristotle is actually saying. And perhaps it's helpful to put it into something like this, a schema where we can separate each of these off in something like a square and say, this, this quadrant over here represents, for example, in a subject, but not predicated of a subject. Uh, this one over here is in a subject, predicated of a subject, not in a subject, predicated of a subject, and then neither in a subject nor predicated of a subject. And if we, if we compare it that way, I think a lot of it falls into place and it turns out not to be so mystifying. Before we look at these four sections, and I don't want to call them categories because category has a very specific meaning here that's connected with predication. Um, what does he mean by, by predicated of a subject or in a subject? So predicated is a little bit easier to, to start with. Let's actually think about that first. The Greek term here in this work is legetai from legain, which is the word to say, to say something about something else. So to say that this book is thick or that it is hardbound or that it is uh, green. I mean, it's a funny thing to say it's green, right? Because the book itself, if this is the book, is not green, but the outside of the book is, is green. Um, or to say that my tie is long or that I am... Uh, I, I am a man, or that I am tall, or I am middle-aged. These are all what we call predication. To say that I'm in front of the chalkboard is also predicating something. In this case, we're talking about a relation, or uh, another way of thinking about it, position. Um, so predication, I think, is not really that tricky to wrap your head around. You're saying something of something else. Or in Aristotle's terminology, we are combining terms. We are, we're taking this term and combining it with this term. Uh, this tie is blue. Hopefully you actually see this on there. Uh, there might be some sort of form of color blindness, or maybe you're watching this on a black and white monitor, but, but trust me, the tie is actually, well, it is blue, but also white, right? Because there's little white dots in there. That's, that's predicating. That's not that difficult. Now, what about in a subject? So we should clarify this term subject to begin with. Um, when we're translating uh, the Greek here, the Greek is hupokemenon. Uh, we translate that as subject. The subject is that in which properties or qualities or predicates, you know, well, predicates can be applied to it. That in which things can uh, in here, because the, the underlying uh, hupo came in on the subject admits that. But the subject is there even if uh, it hasn't been given all of these, these properties or things like that. So think about substances, right? Think about, you know, a book, for example. A book is an individual substance. Um, it's a material object. It's a material object of a certain sort. It's got this very, if you think about it, very strange form of all these bits of paper uh, sewn together or glued together in, you know, with the, the spine and the cover and all that. 
All right. So it can admit of, of things. It can admit of uh, the greenness of the cover, for example, right? So Aristotle goes on and he clarifies by saying, by in or present or found in a subject. That's how it's being translated here, right? Um, he says, I don't mean present or found as its parts are contained in a whole. So we're not talking about like how an individual page is part of the whole of the book or the tie is part of my ensemble of clothing or the finger is part of the hand and also the hand is part of the body. What are we talking about? He says, I mean that it cannot exist as a part from the subject that is being referred to. So again, if we talk about um, the greenness of the book's cover or the whiteness of the book's pages, yes, we can have greenness in other things, for example, in other books. Um, we can have the blueness of the tie somewhere else. I don't actually have anything else that's blue right here, but you get the point. The grayness of the shirt could also exist in the chalkboard, but this grayness here cannot exist except in some object. Do you see the difference between that? Grayness in general, grayness uh, as, you know, sort of a, a color schema that we could, you know, do the RGB for and program into a computer. Grayness as actually existing in something that then you can see. There's a difference there. And we can say this about other things as well. And, and when we get to the examples, I think this will make more, more sense. So let's look first, uh, instead of going in the order that Aristotle does, let's actually start with what's not in a predicate, not in a subject and not predicated of a subject. So this is what Aristotle calls substance, usia. And <clears throat> this would apply to primary substance, that is individual things. Book names a whole bunch of substances. This book right here names a particular book. We destroy this book. There's plenty of other copies out there. I could purchase one, but it would not be this book. This human being that is named by Gregory Brian Sadler, um, and there may be more than one Gregory Brian Sadler out there. I know there's a lot of Gregory Sadlers out there. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe, maybe there's another one with the same name. But, but let's just pretend that that's not the case. We're talking about this guy right here, right? Or this hand. Now, I could get maybe a substitute hand, you know, uh, in some sci-fi scenario or something like that. It would not be this particular hand. So we're talking about... He, he has the example of that person or that horse, that human being or that horse. Now, why is that not in a subject and not predicated of a subject? Okay, let's start with not in a subject. This is a subject. This is, this is substance. Individual substances are the subjects that uh, provide sort of the basis for all these other things to either be in or predicated of. It's not predicated of a subject. We do use the name, for example, Gregory B. Sadler of this guy right here. But um, what we're doing there is we're not predicating me of me, the what it is to be Gregory B. Sadler. We're just saying this name is used to denote this object here. Um, you ask me, hey, what's your name? Gregory B. Sadler, right? <laughs> and there we go. Um, but you're not taking me and predicating me of some other subject. Now, you might say, well, wait a second. What if Dr. Sadler gets into uh, a bus or a train? Isn't he then in another subject, namely that individual mode of transportation? He hops in his car and drives around, right? Well, yes, in a sense, but that's a very accidental connection. And... Um, 
you know, Aristotle would, would be willing to grant it. He'd just, he'd just say, well, really what you're predicating is you're saying that um, Dr. Sadler is inside of something. There's, there's a, a location or a relation or something along those lines, right? Um, and, and it's not really anything essential to say, well, Dr. Sadler's in this, this car. But um, so I, I'm not in a subject. That particular person or horse is not in a subject. It is a subject. It's not predicated of a subject. Let's move on then to um, this category, something that's not in a subject, but is predicated of a subject. I mentioned that you could use my name, Gregory B. Sadler, and predicate that of me. That guy over there is Dr. Gregory B. Sadler, right? Um, that's, that's predication right there. But you're predicating the name of the thing in that case. Or if you say um, Gregory B. Sadler is uh, wearing a blue tie today, um, something that won't remain true for very long, by the way. Uh, it's a true statement at the point that I'm shooting this. Um, you are predicating something of me, the substance that is this individual person. He talks about predicating human being of that human being. Or we could say horse of that horse. Or we could say this, is, this meaning this object, is a book. Meaning this, we call this thing book. Or we call this Aristotle's categories. Meaning this is a copy of uh, the prints that we call Aristotle's categories. We're predicating something of this, this particular subject. Um, even if we call this a green, right? Um, we're, not, we're not necessarily saying that green is of the substance of it or anything like that. We're just saying this is something that appears green. It's something we call green, or you may as well just call it white and, and black and white as well, because that's also the colors of it. Um, you're not asserting anything about the particular greenness that is inhering in the subject. You're just merely predicating the word green as a descriptor of this. So hopefully that is clear. And you see the difference between these, right? Subjects, we don't, we don't predicate them of anything. Things are predicated of subjects, including the name of the subject or the, the kind of thing that the subject is, um, its qualities, uh, its quantity. We're going to get to all that sort of stuff in another video where we talk about the categories uh, per se. Now let's move over to here, this, this part. So this is the opposite. It's in a subject, but it's not predicated of a subject. Here's where it starts to get a bit more tricky. Aristotle uses the example, a bit of grammatical knowledge. So, you know, knowledge that we have inside of our, as we say, metaphorically inside of our head. And I suppose that, you know, if we think that the brain is where this is happening, it's not really all that metaphorical. We're just not exactly quite sure where inside the head, inside the uh, structure of neurons it is, but it is still inside the head, right? So a bit of grammatical knowledge inside of your head, inside your mind. Um, that's not a, a subject itself. Although perhaps maybe, you know, we could stretch it out and, and it, it could be, but Aristotle doesn't treat it as, as a subject. Instead, it's something within a subject. What is the subject? Your mind. You essentially are, are the subject or that other guy who has the grammatical knowledge, who's going to share it with you. Um, particular whiteness in a body. I use the example of the particular greenness of this, this book, this greenness which is caused presumably by some dyes or, you know, processes that, that created this olive kind of green. I'm not sure what shade exactly it corresponds to. Um, that is in this object. This greenness cannot exist except in a physical object. Now, other instances of that greenness can exist in other uh, uh uh, objects, right? Or perhaps even in a color, you know, scheme that we have, say on the computer, how do you know it's that color? Well, you have to look at it and now it's there in the computer screen, right? Or if you say, well, here's a swatch. Well, it's there in that swatch. The swatch is then a subject that, 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 uh, greenness is inside or within, 
let us say. So that's more clear, I hope, at this point, what it means to be in a subject. Now let's talk about the combination where something is in a subject and it's also predicated of a subject. Here's where it gets a little bit more complicated and, and I think it could trip you up very easily because Aristotle uses the example of knowledge uh, being present in a mind, which looks a lot like this, right? And then he says it's also predicated of grammar. So what does Aristotle mean here? He doesn't just mean um, knowledge as grammar, although that's where it's heading. Um, he means knowledge per se. Knowledge per se is present in a, a mind, right? Um, whatever kind of knowledge it happens to be, uh, boat building, uh, dancing the, the Charleston, um, you know, etiquette about which fork goes where, <laughs> whatever sort of thing you, you want, right? It's, it's in a mind. I mean, you could also say, well, the knowledge could also be in a book. What we mean there is that we've, you know, consolidated it in there, or maybe it's on Wikipedia, right? But it's still in something. It, it, it's, it's somewhere. We also use the word knowledge of grammar. We predicate knowledge of grammar, you know, very much the same way as we might predicate animal of human being. Grammar is a particular type of knowledge, right? Um, human being is a particular type of animal. And we can use this term grammar also as a kind of generic term to mean the grammar uh, as knowledge that's inside my head, the grammar that's in, in your head that allows us to both of us be able to talk to each other and, and you can hopefully make sense out of what I'm saying, right? And then when you put your comments, hopefully I, I understand them. Um, so knowledge is being used, be very careful here, in two related but distinct ways. It's being talked about as a thing, which then can be in a subject, but it's also being talked about as something that we can predicate of something, uh, of, of uh, a subject or of something else that could be in a subject like the grammar, uh, gra grammatical knowledge that is in the subject, right? So this one is a little bit tricky here. Hopefully you see the difference between these. Um, there may be some things that depending on their context could seem to jump categories, uh, not categories, jump these classifications or straddle them. But this is, this is what Aristotle is talking about at the beginning of the categories. And so hopefully now this distinction is a bit more clear for you. 